This video will walk through the key ideas in deduplicating training data makes language models better that are well summarized in this Twitter thread from Catherine Lee, the lead author of the paper. So the Twitter thread starts off with data duplication is serious business. 3% of documents in the large language data set C4 have near duplicates. So as a quick background, if you're unfamiliar with this C4 data set, it's a part of language modeling. Language modeling is the best example of how deep learning can leverage unlabeled data. Self-supervised learning is this task to construct supervised learning loss functions with unlabeled data. And then this unlabeled data is grabbed from internet scale sources, like just grabbing all of the text data on the entire internet using these uh, web scrapes. And that's how the C4 data set is constructed. So obviously, as you construct these massive unlabeled data sets, there are probably some problems in the data set. And that's what this paper is exploring, is deduplicating these repeating instances in these data sets. So 3% of the documents have near duplicates. So 3% of this data set, and this is a gigantic data set. So that's a serious amount of duplication in the data set. So uh, the paper studies that deduplication reduces model memorization while training faster and without reducing accuracy. And also it's gonna, re so this model memorization problem is a big deal where it will exactly spit out uh, facts, like say it's memorized your email address or something like that. These kind of problems with language models that uh, you wanna avoid. So the first finding is that they find this one phrase has been repeated 61,036 times in the C4 training set. And when I read the paper, I did not expect this to be the phrase that was repeated over 60,000 times in this data set. So this, by combining fantastic ideas, interesting arrangements, and follow the current trends in the field, this sequence is repeated over 60,000 times in the training set. And you have this train test overlap where it's also appearing in the validation set. So the perplexity that you're reporting on modeling the language data isn't always completely uh, accurate. And there are other sequences that are both featured in the training set and the test set breaking this IID or this kind of uh, yeah, this independent assumption of the trained test sets for evaluating these models. So in addition to this one sequence has been repeated over 60,000 times, there are 280 examples in C4 that have an exact match of 50 tokens or longer with at least 5,000 other examples. So there's one example that's over 60,000 and there's 280 examples that are repeated over 5,000 times with the criterion being that it matches at least 50 of the tokens, which is a massive amount of tokens to match. So then about 7% of the data set has an exact substring match. And this is exactly matching, not even the uh, hashing n-gram technique they propose later on to also detect these duplicates, but an exact substring match of 50 tokens or more with another example in the data set. So having these uh, duplications in the data set is an artifact of the data collection process and doesn't reflect how people typically communicate. And then with these deep learning examples, if they see these examples many times, they're more likely to overfit to it, even if you can't see this signal by just looking at the overall training and validation losses. So by using these techniques, and they propose two techniques where you either uh, find the exact matches or you have this n-gram hashing technique to remove these duplicates from the data set, you can improve the performance and you can improve the uh, unprompted generation, how much it memorizes data, and also reduce the training time. Plus, further show that training on the deduplicated data sets where you remove the uh, duplicates with these two techniques of near dupe and exact substring matching does uh, improve the performance and it doesn't reduce the uh, perplexity on the validation data set, despite being trained on less data set, less data because these are the same example repeated twice. So then another really interesting detail is that data duplication isn't limited to the C4 data set. So with the C4 data set, it makes sense because it's extracted from the internet and then compare it with this real news data set. So I'm not exactly sure how this real news uh, data set is collected, but also looking at say Wikipedia data, they still find these uh, duplications in the training set and the validation set in these other big data sets used for uh, language modeling. Another takeaway from this study is that uh, some of the previous validation uh, perplexities that have been reported and, and overall how you communicate how well the language modeling is performing at this language modeling task has been overstated because of this overlap in the train test distribution. The author provides some further comments on why this is such an important problem to deduplicate this repeating training data for these language models. And the key motivation being that you often want to rerun these uh, models at least 2.5 times. Say you're uh, testing out different architectures, different pre-training strategies, hyperparameters, and all these different kinds of ideas. So deduplicating this data can result in a serious reduction in training set size less fewer steps, and less expensive model training. Thank you so much for watching this walkthrough of the ideas behind deduplicating training data makes language models better. An interesting finding about the large data sets used to pre-train these language models and how reducing them doesn't result in any loss in performance and it speeds up training and results in better models that uh, memorize the data less. Thank you so much and please stay tuned for the rest of the AI Weekly Update series and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm -hmm.